Hello guys, Oscar Hotel 8 Sierra Tango November here from Survival Tech Nord. In this week's video, we're introducing a new device to the channel, and that device is called the Whisper Light from Sota Beams. Now, I know other channels have already introduced the Whisper Light to their blogs and channels, but not in the way that we're going to do it today. You see, Richard from Sota Beams has introduced a new testing methodology uh, for comparisons of different antenna systems. Now, I liked his ideas or concepts so much that I'm going to implement that testing me methodology into the channel. So, whisper light introduction and an introduction to our new testing methodology. Stick with me. Let's get started. You are listening to the emergency broadcast systems. This station broadcasts emergency news and official information on the air for a sign If you've area. been around the channel for a while, you already know that Whisper is a part of my antenna testing toolbox. It's certainly not uncommon to take trips to Lapland or above the Arctic Circle using Whisper to test antennas out in the field where it matters. It's easy to see and understand how Whisper is an important aspect of the channel. Unfortunately, I don't think I've been using it effectively. Whisper stands for Weak Signal Propagation Reporter. Developed by Joe Taylor, Kilo One, Jolly at Tango, Whisper uses low power transmissions to probe propagation or propagation paths around the globe. Borrowing an analogy from Golf Zero Papa Oscar Tango, if JT65 and the Reverse Beacon Network had a child, it would be Whisper. Golf Zero Papa Oscar Tango Michael has made the absolute best Whisper Light video I've seen on YouTube so far. I'll link to it at the end of this video. When I first introduced Whisper on the channel, I did so with an Android app called Whisper Beacon App. Having an Android-powered Whisper test kit was appealing because it meant I could use Whisper with gear that I was already carrying. The Android-based solution is certainly flexible and still an appealing option, but it does tie up your radio for Whisper testing. Later on, I started using WSJTX for Whisper on Ubuntu Linux. Unlike the Android variant of the software, WSJTX will transmit and receive Whisper beacons. This is definitely the most powerful of the Whisper beaconing solutions, but it's also the least portable. Richard from Sotobeam sent me the Whisper light for testing and review. But I think there's already enough of these type of Whisper Light review videos on YouTube. So let's do something a little different. The thing that really brought it home for me was reading the blog post, Testing a Test Methodology. So after reading this, I thought, okay, we're certainly going to implement this methodology into the channel. But I think it would be even more important to get the other YouTube content creators and bloggers to implement this testing methodology themselves. You see, no one really cares about one's perception of how an antenna works. At the end of the day, what's important is being able to test an antenna against something we know or compare two different antennas against each other. That's what the Whisper Light is all about. So rather than suffering through my endless rambling, let's take a look at a field test I've done in a comparison between two different antenna systems. Over the course of several weeks, I went out near the sea to set up both of these antenna systems. The first antenna system was the Super Antenna MP1C in dipole configuration. The second was the Chameleon Impas, also in dipole configuration. One of the reasons I went out so many times over a few weeks was to become proficient with deployment and configuration of these two antenna systems. This way I could be certain that my configurations were correct and I could deliver repeatable, consistent results. Now to get valid data from our comparisons, we need to put the antennas up in the same place at the same time and run with two whisper lights simultaneously. 
So this methodology requires us to double up on everything. Two whisper lights, two power banks, two USB cables, two coaxial cables for the antennas, and of course two different call signs. Now this might seem like a lot of trouble to go through, but I think if we're trying to present valid data in the form of test results, it's not that much effort. I set up the Chameleon MPOS as Oscar Foxtrot 8 Sierra Tango November and the Super Antenna MP1C as Oscar Hotel 8 Sierra Tango November. This last test was run on 30 meters over the course of the day. I'm going to leave it to Michael Golf Zero Papa Oscar Tango's video to show you how to set up your whisper and get started on dexplorer.net. So please take a look at that video if you need help on getting set up. After running my comparison tests for much of the day, I went to dexplorer.net website to select the band that I was operating on. In this case, that was a 30 meter band. I also chose a new comparison at the bottom there so that I could compare between Oscar Hotel 8 Sierra Tango November and Oscar Foxtrot 8 Sierra Tango November. What we're looking at now is the DX10 table. Every two minutes, the system looks at our spots for a selected period. The best 10 in terms of range form the DX10 table. One of the features of the DX10 result is the mean shown at the bottom of each of the tables. For this test, we have 2,186 kilometers for Oscar Hotel 8, Sierra Tango November. For Oscar Foxtrot 8 Sierra Tango November, we had an average or mean distance of 2,107 kilometers. Another visualization option we have is the DX10 graph. Each data point is calculated from all of our spots in the previous hour. The best 10 spots in terms of range are used to calculate a DX10 mean. The mean is displayed on a graph which is updated every two minutes and the DX10 graph can give you a good indication of your system performance and band conditions. The dexplorer.net website also allows you to visualize the spots on a graphical map. In comparison mode, each station is represented by a unique color, one greenish, the other red. A darker combination of those two colors represents stations with reception reports for both stations. Clicking on any one of the stations represented on the map will give you a signal report for one or both stations depending on uh, which one it's received. This is especially useful if you have a target range or region that you want to focus your test on. Another way we can visualize the results is with the spots table. The spots table shows the raw whisper data for your selected time period. This is useful since it allows you to see all of the stations who spot you and not just the DX10 list. If you're in comparison mode, you'll be offered a choice to switch between your own spots or spots for the station that you are comparing yourself to. The final, and in my opinion, best way to visualize the test results is with the simultaneous spots screen. The dexplorer.net help explains it like this. For a more precise comparison of two nearby transmitting stations or antennas, you can analyze reports where both stations were heard by the same receiver at the same time. These reports will be in near identical conditions, so the SNR values for the two reports should give a good indication of how strong the two signals are compared to one another. This allows the comparison of stations without needing as much averaging as would be needed if comparing results from different times to compensate for varying conditions, for example, or from different receivers to compensate for different effectiveness of receiving antennas and equipment. This is very useful for comparing antennas and the reason I'm explaining it to you now. Another excellent feature for this screen is the ability to limit the range of the spots being displayed in the results. 
So limiting the range is actually incredibly useful if you're using amateur radio utility for preparedness or disaster communications and you want to focus on regional communications. On the flip side, you have a station which is a fixed range away from you and you're trying to find the most effective configuration to reach that station. In whatever way you plan to use them, both the Whisper Lite and the dexplorer.net website are valuable tools. Now, although it's taken me a while to get it done, I have to tell you I've had a blast making this video. But what I've done in this video is just a small part of what I've done with the Whisper Lite. Check the link at the top of the screen. Now, before I close out this video, I want to say a special thank you to those of you who have contributed through Patreon and PayPal. I never expected that, but I very much appreciate it. For everyone else, if you like the content that I'm creating and the job that I'm doing, please share this video with someone or someplace where you think they might enjoy it. Rock and roll, guys. Thanks for watching.